Hi all, today we are going to see Informatica SQL transformation. Okay, what is SQL transformation? Uh, SQL transformation is a connected transformation used to process a SQL queries in the midstream of the pipeline. It can be active and also a passive transformation as well. You can also pass the database connection information to the SQL transformation uh, as an input at the runtime. Uh, that is instead of uh, in usual in any other transformation, uh, you provide the uh, uh, database connection through the workflow. Wherein in the SQL transformation, you can do that dynamically. You can pass the database connection as well. Okay, uh, as a first statement of this uh, uh, presentation says, um, it used to process a SQL queries in the midstream of the pipeline. So what are all the queries it can execute or what are all the statements, SQL statement it can execute. So it can execute a DDL statement like uh, create, alter, drop, truncate, dream name and DML statement like insert, update, delete, merge and of course data retrieval statement, select statement and data control uh, language statement that is DCL, grant, revoke and um, transaction control statement, commit and rollback. Um, so now let's see how the SQL transformation can be configured. So basically SQL transformation can be configured in two, two mode that is script mode and in query mode. Okay. Now let's see how the trans SQL transformation work um, in each and every mode. Okay. Let's say if the SQL transformation is configured in a script mode. If you configure the SQL transformation in the script mode. Um, it can be, it can only act as a passive transformation. Remember, if you configure the SQL transformation in the script mode, it can act only as a passive transformation. That is, it is defaulted to passive and cannot be configured in active at all. And the other properties, like uh, other properties of the SQL transformation, like uh, DB type and the database connection, is like uh, what is DB type? Here you are specifying. Uh, what type of uh, database your query uh, going to get executed? Say so it can be either Oracle SQL Server or uh, Teradata. Um, another property we have that is called uh, database connection. Uh, the database connection uh, can be static and also a dynamic as well uh, for in script mode. Uh, the the prominent feature is query mode. In query mode. You can make the uh, SQL transformation to work in active, also in a passive mode. And the other properties like uh, DB type and database connection uh, remains the same. So, okay, what is, uh, let's see what is the uh, difference between a static connection and a dynamic connection. So, when I say static connection, it's a normal day-to-day -day, uh, Informatica connection wherein you give the connection string in the workflow, um, uh, whereas in the dynamic, uh, you pass the connection string to the mapping. Okay, uh, what are all the points you have to consider um, when you are working with the SQL transformation? Um, one prominent point, uh, when query mode is configured to work in a passive mode, as I already told you, in the query mode can be configured uh, to work in active, also passive. When you, when you configure the um, uh, query, SQL transformation in query mode to work as a passive, uh, make sure your query or a script is not having any select statement. If you if you if you have any select statement in the query mode, which is configured to work as a passive transformation, in that case you will retrieve only one row. Say um, say like you have a query in the SQL transformation which is retrieving two thousand rows, uh, but if you are configured to that as a passive mode, you will just get one record alone. We will see all those things in a practical example. And other point you have to remember, uh, that's another property called max output row count. Um, this is something like to, you are telling the SQL transformation what is the maximum output row count. Uh, say like uh, uh, you have a select statement in your query and you can limit that, say if a query is outputting 50,000 row, you can definitely limit that to uh, 100, 200, it's kind of where class. Uh, but there could be a, I think it is de it is defaulted to, um, let me check, it is defaulted to 10,000 or 10 million, I'm not remembering. Um, I, I, let's, say, let's, let's check on that one. Um, it's, I guess it's 10,000. 
Um, but say if you want all the rows from the select statement, please make sure you are making that to zero. The, the, the property of the max output row count should be set to zero. Only then you will get the entire output of the SQL uh, select statement. And other, another important point you have to consider, the SQL query output and the SQL transformation output should be in the same order. Um, maybe you'll better understand this when we really work on the practical way. Okay, let's start to work on the some practical example. So as I already told you, SQL transformation is used to execute the query in the midstream pipeline. Okay. I have imported SQL transformation yum SQL I'm naming it as I'm sorry it's a transformation SQL transformation in query mode okay uh, let me walk through the theoretical part as well so that uh, it will be pretty easy for you to understand so in script mode it is defaulted to act i mean passive so whenever i choose a script mode you can see this particular thing sql transformation will run in passive mode i mean it's defaulted you cannot modify this anymore so but if i make this a query mode i can have it's i have option to either to make this as a passive or if I don't select this one, it will work as an active mode. So uh, that's a difference. So another thing, DB type. So this is the DB type I was talking about. So this is something like how, um, where the your query is going to get executed. That is, um, where this query is going to get executed. Whether it's an Oracle database, um, Oracle, Sybase, Informix, Teradata, Netiza on which database is going to get executed. In my laptop, I have configured to Oracle. So I'm just using this Oracle. And uh, as all other database, and this one is database connection, which I was talking about, like it can be either dynamic or static. So uh, for time being, I'm giving running, walking through with the example of static. When I say static, it's a normal thing. Uh, the database connection should be given in the uh, workflow. So I'm configuring this particular say, uh, uh, workflow, I mean designer, to work in query mode and uh, database is Oracle and I'm making that to work in static. And if I'm not selecting this as a passive, I want to uh, run this particular uh, query in an active mode. I'm clicking OK. So one thing, so once you may enable this one like active or passive, you cannot, uh, you cannot make any changes. Uh, that's what uh, it's being told here okay it isn't okay now comes the critical part so you have when you configure your uh, sql transformation in uh, query mode you will get two uh, default ports one is input other one is sql error um, so okay once you get that one also this is the sql input so this is the notepad file where you have your sql query and this is the transformation which is going to execute the SQL query. So for that you have to just drag and drop this to your SQL transformation. Okay, remember one thing. So uh, it will create two port. One is like uh, it's an input query, whatever uh, you have dragging and dropping into a SQL transformation. So say like query name and query. Thus for the same thing, it will create underscore output. This is very critical point. Uh, this is output transformation, I mean uh, output port. So you have to configure it manually in the SQL transformation. So saying like what is the output required. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. I am looking for output configuration. So this is critical thing. So this should be in the same order. The output port should be in the same order uh, as your query output. If you see now, I have job ID as a first column and the count of the job ID as a second column. 
so i have um, the target table is also on the same structure um, i mean query name that's the name of it uh, job id and the count of the same so i have to make sure i'm placing that in the same order even if i don't place that in the same order the job will not get up and but it may uh, the i mean the output will be uh, incorrect not incorrect like when you take that to an uh, downstream it will be uh, incorrect okay so what is that i have q value and it is if you see this is native so this is something like what is the actual column value i mean column data type minus varchar2 and uh, of if you see maybe i can show you i can describe this one and see how what is the actual data data type of this column Okay, uh, if you see the varchar to ten query name and the query value is varchar to twenty, so I have to make sure a query value. Uh, I'm giving the same varchar twenty, and I also have to insert query count that is number two ten of two. That is number ten of two. Okay, now comes the important part: SQL query. So this one, as you are passing the entire query, you have through this uh, notepad. So you have two things: query name and query. So this is defined in the uh, source qualifier. So this is query name and this is query. so you have to tell from which column you have the query so you have to select this one and uh, you have to use tilde operator to to mention this particular column is having the full query okay apply okay so now you have passed the query successfully to the sql transformation now you have to take the output of the query okay so this is output q value on q count so remember this underscore output is something the source source uh, columns so so here if you see query name and query output so query output is like um if you want to take actual query so these two things this is query name and query output if you want to take these two columns to the output then you can just pass it out to your downs uh, your target table now i don't want to take the entire query i want to just take the query uh, line number of the query um that is query name output i am taking this to target and i'm taking the this is the for output like this query uh, as providing two columns as output this query provide us two columns output that is defined here that is a group uh, group or value and uh, count i'm making it clear so when i say value that is say like what job id values and count i'm taking that to output query value and query output okay uh, another important thing i i told you um the sql setting the maximum is 10000 if you want all the queries output it should be configured to zero i mean all the queries output if you limit that to 10 or 15 only if i have uh, in the source if i have uh, 100 it, it will be you will get only 10 or 15 in the output i think i'm done uh, let me generate a uh, sql i mean uh, workflow for this one 